So welcome back everybody to this third chapter and here we're going to discuss a few cases uh, from back home where we're going to show you how uh, the IVL technology really helped us in, in even treating more patients with hostile access. So the first case uh, is a 71 year old male patient with this penetrating atherosclerotic ulcer at the level just distally of the left subclavian artery. So my plan was to implant a thoracic endograft and then with an in situ fenestration for the left subclavian artery. So the device that I need to implant is a 20 French device, inner diameter. And if we look at the both iliac arteries, on the right side, he has a six millimeter self-expandable stent, which of course doesn't help us at all because we need to implant an endograft which has more than seven millimeters of diameter. On the left side, you can see this large, heavily calcium burden. And if we do a cross section of it, you can see it has a diameter of maximum five by almost three millimeters. So this is why I opted for IVL. And just by low pressuring four atmospheres, the seven millimeter IVL catheter, which was the largest one available at the moment, um, Otherwise, nowadays, I would have used eight millimeters with the, five, with the M5 plus catheter. But just with low pressure, I could increase luminal gain, as you can see on the, left si on the right side. And I was able to advance the endograft and then, of course, finish it up with the in situ fenestration for the left subclavian artery with a covered stent graft, as you can see here. This is a very short video just to demonstrate how, how it really works. So here you can see just by low pressure ballooning, um, um, and in delivering our, our impulses um, to the vessel wall, we increased luminal gain. We were able to change the vessel wall compliancy and we were able to deliver the endograft and cutting through it like a knife through butter, as you can see on, on this image here. And we were able to, to finish up uh, the, the procedure. Afterwards, we looked at the iliacs and uh, there was a small plaque shift. So the left hypogastric artery was occluded. So that's why I uh, took a Bernstein catheter and then with a 14, 014 wire, I was able to reopen uh, um, the hypogastric artery by just inflating it also with a, with, a, with a small balloon. So as you can see then here, it has a nice result with a patent hypogastric artery, which is also important to reduce the risk of spinal cord ischemia. And if you look at the pre and post CT scan, again, you can see here, the amazing luminal gain and also the, the modified calcium afterwards. And now we have lumen of 7.7 .7 .7 by 7.3 millimeters. So this was an excellent example to start with. Next case, Michel. Let's stay in the thoracic district and I will show you another case of aortic heart aneurysm and uh, which we had hostile access, but we were able to deliver the thoracic graft. So, we have a 24 French outer diameter device. And to be honest, we had not so hostile access in this case with a very small caliber with concentric lesion. We had a four millimeter on the right side, and of course, we chose the left side with a five millimeter lesion, minimal lumen diameter, with the calcification on both sides of the iliac vessel. But probably in this case, the IVL was not needed. So we start this procedure by using a smaller profile sheet, 18 French and 22 French, but we were not able to cross the lesion. Why? Because probably we had a lesion in the middle portion of the external, a spot lesion, and probably we don't have the right compliance to cross this vessel. For this reason, we used, we choose to use IVL, seven millimeter balloon, and you can clearly see the angiogram on the right side after the IVL treatment. So we increase the luminum gain, but above all, in this case, we increase the compliance of the vessel. So we were pushing our delivery system without crossing the lesion before IVL, and then we facilitated to deliver our endograft. 
and we had a better compliance to deliver in a safely way our thoracic endograft. And this is the postoperative CT scan that shows us the remodeling of the lesion without any signs of dissections and with an increased lumen diameter. So the next case is, is not so much about uh, getting luminal gain, um, but we have to think long-term also, yeah? and we want to prevent limb occlusion. So this is a case, it's a 73-year-old female patient with a type 4 tracheobronal aortic aneurysm, where the plan was to deliver an endograft, low-profile BVAR from the right side. And on the left side, she had this high-grade uh, stenosis, very calcified, as you can see on the images here. And we want to prevent limb occlusion, and that's why I opted here to treat this patient with a 7 millimeter IVL catheter, as you can see on the images here. And then it was, of course, easy to, to enter um, the, the main bifurcated graft with our limb, and then easily that post dilated with a non-compliant balloon. And here you can see not only the luminal gain, but here you can see also that, in my opinion, this will stay open for eternity. Yeah? We go from 3 by 5 millimeters to 7 by 11 millimeters. There is a story behind this case. I was on call during the night. This was the first day in my new hospital. Wow. And uh, I had to treat this case. If you can clearly see, we had a triple A arctic abdominal aneurysm with container rupture in a female with a small caliber, very narrow, very calcified, so very hostile iliac axis. As you can see, we had 3.5 millimeters on the right side in the external, 3 millimeters on the left side. And uh, we had a large amount of calcium, about 25% of the full volume on both sides. But uh, she was really high risk for open repair. She has severe comorbidities such as obesity, COPD, CKD, uh, active pneumonia. But she was also unfit for endovascular repair because we had extremely narrow it, less than three millimeter iliofemoral axis. So it's what we did during the night, we decided to use IVL with sequential bilateral treatment that was, of course, less time consuming in this case. And as you can clearly see, we achieved a, an increased luminal gain of 5.5 on the right side and 6.5 on the left side. We delivered six cycles on uh, each side. And this video shows you how we increased the luminal gain and the vessel compliance that was fundamental to achieve our results in this case. This allowed us to deliver the graft in percutaneous way in a local anesthesia in this high-risk female patient. And you can see the postoperative CT scan with no signs of dissections. And again, we can see the video, the reconstruction, and the endonavigation by showing the increased lumen diameter and the gray, and again, by showing the good flow at the level of external and common femoral vessels. This is another case, I think, to highlight the importance of, of uh, luminal gain and, and vessel compliance. Um, this was an 80-year-old female patient. Uh, with a, with a uh, rapid growing uh, thoracoabdominal aortic aneurysm, just 56 millimeters, but she was growing inside of six months with uh, more than uh, eight millimeters. That's why we, tr uh, we plan to, to, um, to uh, do the endovascular procedure with a custom made low profile BVAR with an 18 French inner diameter sheet. And the problem that she had was this amount of calcium at the proximal part of her uh, common iliac artery on the right side. The left side was smaller, so we, changed, we, we went for the right side for endograft delivery. But I encountered the same problem. I couldn't uh, advance my 18 French dilator, 
So that's why I needed to opt for, again, uh, IVL. And I used, again, the 7 millimeter IVL catheter. It gave a lot of impulses over the entire iliac axis. And then afterwards, it was easy to, to uh, get our dilator up and to smoothen the path for our endograft, which we then, of course, completed. And also very important for the future, preventing limb occlusion here as well, because it's the proximal part of the common iliac artery. And this is where you can see on a post-operative CT scan also this nice luminal gain of almost more than 50-70%, as you can see on the right side. This is the last case. I would say a complex case with an associated aneurysmatic disease and occlusive disease. We had a CDO, a long occlusion at the level of the right external artery, and two tight stenosis at the origin of common iliac and a small aneurysm in the distal aorta. Nowadays, we have the M5 plus catheter that could be really very useful to use the brachial axis in this case with a working length of 135 centimeter. Do you remember, Michel, we discussed together this case? I remember, Stefano. I think um, my suggestion was to come from the left side um, use IVL to optimize the axis to get luminal gain to really be able to deliver your endograft through the left side. And then as a limb for the right side, just use the brachial axis and then implant the balloon expandable covered stent. But uh, you're going to show us uh, how you did it. So, these are the lesions at the, le the origin of the common iliac artery. Tight stenosis with the 1.5 millimeter Minimum lumen diameter. Yeah, we needed a vessel preparation in this case. As you suggested, we used IVL from brachial axis. On the left side, we used IVL at the origin of the left common iliac with a 7 millimeter balloon. We should remember that six French sheet is needed for the 7 millimeter. In this case, we use a seven French sheet to deliver the covered stent in place of iliac, iliac limbs. And then we were able, by improving the vessel compliance, to cross the lesion and to deliver the ultra profile endograft from the left common femoral artery. After delivering the endograft, we cross the flow divider from above and we deliver the lithotripsy by using, seven, again, 70 millimeter IVL catheter in the right common iliac artery. Then we deployed the covered stand. We were able at this, at this point to cross the right CDO of the external to stay intraluminal, to have a predilatation in this case, and to deliver the lithotripsy by using again seven millimeter IVL. So the same catheter to allow a better expansion, a bare, a bare self expandable stand in this case. So we can see the final angiogram by using, after using 10 cycles at three different locations, bilateral at the level of the common iliac and at the level of the right external iliac. I will show you the post-operative CT scan with the center line and volume rendering that show us uh, a very good patency and the lumen expansion, both common iliacs and also at the level of the right external, and any signs of dissections. And it's very important to remember that we should every time check the flow when we use lithotripsy, because we can really restore the natural pulsatility of the vessel. By checking the duplex, we can clearly see the three-phase flow, like in this case, at the level of bilateral common femoral arteries. I think this is an amazing case, Stefano, where you highlighted the importance of treating both the aneurysm and the occlusive disease. And I think the use of these IVL catheters is helping, especially me, and I think I can say the same for you, to not be afraid of, of access ways, you know, for our endograft delivery. Because with this new system, and especially now with the longer device and the lower French size, we can even treat more and bigger and more patients. I think this is an amazing uh, new development. Right, Michel. We planned this case together. We used IVL and we had success. Perfect.
Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Michel. I am really enjoyed this discussion about IVL and how IVL can help us to expand the boundaries in IVAR and TVAR. I fully agree, Stefano, and I thank you for joining us and I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye. Ciao.